Hey, now it's Sunday, December 17th. Uh, dropped a lot of videos last week. You're probably only going to get one this week because of the fact that uh, it's late on Sunday and I don't have the energy I need to film a bunch of videos. Uh, totally off track. This past week, I went to Vegas. I saw U2 at the Sphere. Well, I'm not the biggest U2 fan. I thought they're a little bit over the hill. Sphere is incredible. Check out the Sphere. Uh, See a concert at the Sphere. It's worth every penny. Now, let's talk back to baseball. Uh, we're at this man, Harry Heilman. He's right above me. And dare I say, underrated in baseball. Uh, yeah, he hit, at the time of his retirement, he had a lifetime batting average of 342, which was third highest all time for any right hander. He was behind Roger Hornsby and Ed Delahante, who uh, we talked about Ed Delahante, fell off a bridge, whatever. Chumped off, pushed off, whatever. Uh, he had over 1,500 RBIs. He had 26,000, 26, 2,600 hits. He won the batting championship four times. And all four times he won the batting championship, he won it over another Hall of Famer like Al Simmons, Lou Gehrig. Uh, I think maybe even Babe Ruth. I don't know offhand. I didn't study him that much. But, I mean, the sad, sad thing about Harry Heilman is he didn't get in the Hall of Fame until 1952. And, like, no question he deserved it. it is like he was uh vastly underrated in the sense that he's not wasn't a first ballot and he died before he could get into the hall of fame like literally the year before he got in the hall of fame he died he died in 1951 very suddenly of lung cancer ron says he's a tough autograph and ron and i are both from this area and so is harry heilman harry heilman is with barry less than a mile from where i grew up so i never saw his grave but again it's less than a mile from where i grew up in Southfield, Michigan, and there's actually, and I can't find it anymore, but remember the show Pawn Stars, not Hardcore Pawn, but Pawn Stars with Les Gold. I brought in a Harry Heilman autograph, and I sold it on Pawn Stars. So uh, that's a whole other story for another day. I wish I could find the video and walk you through it. But uh, anyways, Harry Heilman. Uh, so right before he passed away, Ty Cobb, who's a good friend of him, found out he was sick. And one of the nice things Ty Cobb did, he went to his deathbed, basically. He died a day before the All-Star game in Detroit. And Ty Cobb told him that he just got word that he was going to get into the Hall of Fame. And it brought him great joy. Even though this was not true, he didn't get into the Hall of Fame to the following year. Man, bad at 400. 400. And qualified. Three, and didn't get in the Hall of Fame, like, until like after he passed away very sad uh after his career as a baseball player in detroit he went on to become a radio announcer in detroit uh one of the pioneering like people to call radio of major league baseball over like a wide, yeah, wide network so he was ron said he wasn't that responding to autographs but for everything i read and i can see he was very responding if you mail to tiger stadium he was very good about signing autographs until the short time before he died. He died right before the All-Star Game in Detroit in 1951, which he was scheduled to call for the national radio. And they held a moment of silence at Tiger Stadium of his death. So I think he was once up for the Ford Frick Award in 2016. I'm not 100% for sure of that. But again, that's just how good of an announcer he was that he's even was considered for the Ford Frick Award. So, okay, talked enough about Harry Heilman. And the sadness of it. But without any further ado, let's talk about the autograph analysis of Harry Heilman. So let me share my screen here. Da, 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 da. As usual, we'll start with the PSA database right here. Harry Heilman, in my opinion, has a beautiful autograph. I really like his autograph a lot. Uh, in the beginning of his career, he signed, like during those playing days, let's say, he signed with the letter E. Post career, he went out with the letter E. And like I said, he was very around baseball a lot through his whole life. So even though he died in 1952 and before he got in the Hall of Fame, he banded over 400. He was very popular. Uh, he signed a lot at the ballpark. He was constantly around Tiger Stadium because he was a player, he was an announcer, so on and so forth. So his autograph is not terribly rare. But what we're looking for is you sort of see like a number two right here and a number two right here. This can loop. It cannot loop, loop. But it should look like a number two. And, again, this is signed out at like a 45-degree angle. But still, it slants a little to the right. I'm looking for the H's here to be nearly identical. I'm looking for the loop here, the loop here. I'm looking for this H to come higher than this H, and then a straight down, straight down. These two H's should be very similar, 
but usually not always, but usually this H is higher than this H. In addition to that, this A starts always up here and is open. You should see all the letters of his autograph. He signed on a very nice plane, as you can see right here, except for like the Y and the N. The N, I've seen it tail off and up, kind of like Paul Wehner, or come down like this. So that's just one autograph. We can keep going. Uh, we'll talk about my autograph shortly. But these came out. These are not considered checks. These are promissory notes of Harry Heilman. And again, beautiful autographs. You can see this address of them right here. Uh, and again, a lot of these have cancellations through them. So uh, like I guess these are promissory notes, not a draw, uh, not uh, checks per se, but to me, they're still legal documents. Again, you see how the, the number two right here goes up H slight down. Number two right here comes down. Again, we see the E because of the fact the E is during the string of playing career. You can see 1926. So uh, we're going to keep going on these promissory notes. And these are out there. Don't get me wrong. Uh, again, this is, again, I don't know when this is, but again, another beautiful autograph. Again, the H right here, down, the H right here is down. You could sort of see the two, the two loops, the flare, straight down, straight down. Open A right here, open A right here, the airy, the Heilman kind of curves. You can see all the letters of his name. Again, this everything I'd love to see. Uh, again, another just beautiful. I mean, he's got a really nice autograph, Harry Heilman. Just such flair and just like, really, this is why it's the Paul Wainer. You see how it kind of flares up the end of Heilman. But again, right here, I've seen, the, like I said, the A come through and the E come through. Sometimes it doesn't come through. This is more rare. Usually you don't see this A start down here, but I still think it's a great autograph. If you're looking, like I said, for flair. Now, here is a bank check. Uh, again, it usually, usually if these are from Wabig State Bank or National Bank of Detroit. So, again, the Harry Heilman. These checks go for... They're ticking up in value. I've, they're up to like seven hundred to a thousand dollars. I've seen. We'll take a look at that in a little bit. Harry Heilman, uh, again, right here. Just again, you can sort of see that two right there. Beautiful flare, straight down two right there. Flare down. The A starts here again. It's open A. It's not always an open A. You can make out every single letter of his autograph. Just again, again, another check. Hopefully, you're getting the feel. This is one of those you just want to feel. This is kind of a cool because this is made out to his roommate. Another Hall of Famer, Heine Manouche. And Heine Manouche did endorse these on the back. So you get two Hall of Famers in one document. Check. It's probably the only checks like this. Maybe a couple others like this. But they're very rare. Uh, these command, I would say, $200 more, $300 more. I've seen a few of these. They're, they're not impossible. Again, uh, this is again. This came from his personal collection, uh, which we'll talk to in a second. Again, gorgeous H. You see the two come here straight down. The two H come down. Every letter, now the Heilman's coming up, the open A right there. Again, like it's signed on a nice plane down here. This is what I'm looking for in a Harry Heilman. And now we're back to the beginning. So uh, I would, well, it's interesting to start here because we'll go to my photo book. And the autograph I have right here is a very similar promissory note. I, I bought this for $500. I remember when I bought it. Uh, I want to replace this autograph. It's on my replace list only because I don't like the cancellation right here. So it's one of those. My, it is on my upgrade list. Not that I think it's wrong. Like I said, this autograph is like right above me right here. This beautiful picture of Harry Heilman. Very nice above. Like right there. So uh, and it's framed. So I don't think I'm going to change it anytime soon. But uh, it's good. It's real. So that's always nice as well. So, I mean, uh, looking at eBay, I look at past sales. And they're going for pretty high. So, uh we're going to come back to this in a second. This book I want to point out right here. So this is an, I, this is the one I sold on um, Hardcore Pawn. Yeah, I sold on Hardcore Pawn. I don't remember which one. The one filled in Detroit with the goals. I sold a similar book of this. So the story behind this is during the offseason, obviously the baseball players didn't make a lot of money. So in 1946, uh, Charlie Geringer worked at Hudson's, which was a major department store since bought by Macy's. And they had a book signing, and these books are out there, and they were signed by Fred Lieb, who was the author of this book, Charlie Geringer, Harry Heilman. So usually you're going to see all three of these signed together. Uh, for some reason, the owner added Tom Monahan to this, who was owned the Tigers in 84. I don't know why. But anyways, these are, again, these are all good. These books are out there. They're not terribly expensive. They're just considered like signed cuts for whatever reason. So they go about $350, $400. Uh, Looking out, just more right here. Assigned photos, you're going to pay more. I saw this. At first, I'm like, whoa, the signed postcard. This is fake, but it looks good because, like, there's no signed postcards. He got in after he passed away. But then you can see right here, this is a cut. Good cut. Very beautiful autograph again. 
everything you want to see in a Harry Heilman attached to a postcard. Uh, I think someone <laughs> overpaid $1,125 for a cut, which is all this is at the end of the day is very high for a Heilman because we just saw another one signed for $350. Now, I want to take a look at a not this right here. This sold right here for $137. And why did it go so low? This sold on eBay. This guy had a bunch, and I think they're all bad. I think they're all really bad. I mean, if you look at this closely, you don't see the two. You don't see the flare at all. The Heilman is very tough. It looks like it's a start stop. You know what I'm saying? It bounces way too much. The H doesn't come. It should be way higher. It should come straight down. It shouldn't hook around. I think... I mean, someone put a picture. This is common. They called it a government postcard. But again, as you could see in the back, it was never canceled. It was never mailed out. So I think this is just, in my opinion, a really bad forgery. So uh, just looking more, here's a couple of things that sold recently. Again, here's another signed book. Someone added Bertie Tibbetts and Hale Newhouse. It looks like later in life in George Cal. But again, the top three, like I said, were signed at the same time. Only sold for $396. Like I said, not a lot of money. I will talk signed baseballs. So again, here's a signed check. And again, I'm trying to find bad baseballs. And it's so this baseball is from the family. But where is the base? This baseball right here. This was a baseball of classic auctions. Of course, it has a uh, I'm trying to go. It has uh, from 2018, a JSA LOA. So uh, and it says the keys are Heilman and Geringer. Now, we did Geringer already. And this Geringer looked off to me. I'm not a fan of this. In addition, this Heilman. I don't see the two. Even though we see side baseballs, I don't see the two. This H looks really smushed. These H and this H looks nothing alike. And again, this baseball, I know it's tough to see, unfortunately, but this came from his personal collection. So I'm sure it's good. This came from the family releases. I don't know. Leland's 2001, you see uh, the Harry Heilman collection. And even then, even though it's tough to see, the H's have the separation. They come straight down. Compared to this, I just see how it get a bend. It doesn't come straight down. This H is not as high. I'm just, I'm not a huge fan of this baseball. And I know it's got a JSA, but again, I'm not a fan of JSA either. So that's enough about Harry Heilman. Uh, God, I wish I had the strength. I just don't to do uh, Ricky Henderson. He's an uh, interesting personality. So uh, anyways, that's it. Please hit the like button if you're still watching. And as always, keep collecting.